Hello crypto fam thanks for tuning back to my channel in today's video i wanted to talk a bit on the current terra luna crash and wanted to highlight the risk associated with algorithmic stable coins now the fate of luna has been shared by many algorithmic stable coins in past so i thought it is important to talk about it let me know if you would like me to make more of this style of videos where we discuss risks associated with investing in crypto and talk about current market trends in crypto not to create hype but to understand the underlying risks associated with this new technologies and to understand the mechanism of how it works in depth first let me give you a brief overview on terra blockchain terra was formed by terraform labs which is based in singapore luna is terra's native coin and is used for transaction fees on terra blockchain Luna is also used to maintain stablecoin peg and UST is Terra's stablecoin. Now what is a stablecoin? A stablecoin is pegged to 1 US dollar. So 1 UST is equivalent to 1 US dollar. Now let me briefly explain you how UST pegging works on Terra. Now you can burn 1 dollar worth of Luna and you can mint 1 UST. Now burning means you remove 1 dollar of luna out of the circulation and minting means you introduce a new 1 usd into the ecosystem now similarly it happens the other way you can burn 1 usd and in exchange you can mint 1 dollar worth of luna now let's talk about how does this usd maintain its peg to 1 dollar now let's say 1 UST is now trading above its peg and it is trading for 1.3 US dollars now the usually what will happen is since now 1 UST is trading at a higher point traders will start burning their luna and start buying this 1 UST so for 1 dollar worth of luna they can get 1 UST and this 1 UST is now worth 1.3 US dollars now if they sell off this UST they can make an profit of approximately 30% it won't be completely 30% because you do have to pay some fees out of it but for brevity let's say they earn 30% profit instantly now what this is going to do is first of all this is going to increase a sell pressure on ust because now they will start selling ust to realize this profit until the ust is sold it cannot be said that they have realized this profit they have to sell it to realize this profit and since we are selling luna you are burning luna the price of luna will go up because now luna is decreasing in circulation and this way eventually the peg will be maintained at 1 dollar now let's talk about the opposite case let's say now 1 usd is trading below its peg it's trading as 0.7 us dollars now traders will see this opportunity and they will start burning 1 usd to mint 1 dollar worth of luna now in order to realize this profit they would have to sell this luna for some other currency now in this case this is going to increase buy pressure on usd and this is going to increase the sell pressure on luna so in this way because of increasing demand of ust the ust peg will again get restored at 1 dollar now this works well enough in bull market because luna can absorb this sell pressure since there is a lot of speculative demand for luna so in this case when peg goes below 1 dollar when more ust is burned then more luna is minted and comes into circulation which makes its price crash now in bear market there is no speculative demand for luna and since it does not have really any other use case apart from backing ust or let's say there is very limited use case apart from backing ust so this sell pressure on luna cannot be absorbed and this will make luna's price crash until it goes to zero and this is also known as death spiral and this is what exactly happened so in nutshell the system trying to save itself ends up destroying itself the more usd is burned the more luna is minted the more luna gets minted the more its price crash now algorithmic stable coins have crashed in past due to the similar death spiral phenomenon now let's think about what 
could be the cause for this crash i think one cause you can clearly see for this crash is that luna does not have any uncorrelated demand apart from mostly backing ust in the case of heavy sell pressure there is no outside demand that can handle it especially true in bear markets like take for an example us dollars even if it gets shorted it does have a demand as it is used for goods and services which can likely absorb this selling pressure now one more thing that i quickly want to discuss is the difference between algorithmic stable coins and centralized stable coins such as usdc binance usd etc the centralized stable coins like usdc is fully collateralized that is they are backed by real us dollar unlike usd which is uncollateralized and many believe that that it being uncollateralized is the biggest reason for luna's collapse now one more aspect is the luna foundation guard a non-profit company that was responsible for ensuring usd peg remains stable lfg a luna foundation guard has bought bitcoin to ensure that in case of depegging holders can redeem their usd for bitcoin However, since Bitcoin is heavily correlated with crypto market, in case of bearish sentiment, it would essentially force the LFG to send the BTC for a loss. It is still unclear as to why Bitcoin was chosen instead of any uncorrelated asset to crypto markets. However, moving on, now I'm going to pull up a Twitter thread written by Tasha that beautifully explains stablecoin business and what are the causes that this model doesn't work for algorithmic stablecoins. Let's first talk about what a stable coin is. So one stable coin is always priced at one dollar. One example of stable coin is USDC. So one USDC is always pegged or equivalent to one dollar. Now let's talk about the nature of stable coin business. Almost all stable coins, regardless of design, involve you, the user, give a stable coin issuer X amount of assets in exchange for Y amount of a token that's priced at one dollar. Let me show you an example. Let's say you have one Ether. Currently, Ether is approximately trading at around seventeen hundred dollar. So you can swap one Ether for seventeen hundred stable coins, and each stable coin will be equivalent to one dollar. So let's say if you are swapping it for USDC, then you will obtain seventeen hundred USDC, and each USDC is equivalent to one US dollars. Now, exchange between stablecoin issuer and you is an exchange of risk or volatility. So, as a user, you are exchanging your volatile asset, which is ether, because it can go down in price at any point of time. For, for essentially a sort of an insurance that this stablecoin is always equal to one US dollar. That means you will always have seventeen hundred US dollars, no matter what the ETH price is, because you have swapped it for this stablecoin. that means the stable coin issuer for example usdc pust etc they are taking on a risk on this volatile asset they are taking this volatile asset from you and essentially guaranteeing that this will always be worth this much amount so how do they make money so there are two ways that a stable coin issuer would be able to make money one is from risk premium issuer charging a fee for taking on asset price volatility risk So it is possible that USDC uh, issuers can charge you some premium upfront for exchanging this ether, or the second way is from return arbitrage. Issuer earning positive yields in dollar term on deposited assets while paying you zero percent yield to you. So what is the meaning of that? Since ETH is also an interest-bearing asset, you can actually provide this as a collateral and earn some interest, or this is also an appreciating asset. So given that in future eth might appreciate in price its price is going to go higher and this in turn will make profit for the stable coin issuer they don't have to take a lot of risk with this asset they can simply stake it and earn some interest over this because this is an interest bearing asset so these are the two ways that the stable coin issuer can make money now here she is explaining about how usd money supply roughly grows and this is also in other words inflation and the more usd in circulation the lesser purchasing power there is for one us dollars okay so this thread you can read in more details i'm not going to go over every point explained here but let's come back to the main point and we are getting to the main point here which is it didn't work out the way for terra or most other stable coins algorithmic stable coins to date 
and one example of such algorithmic stable coin that collapsed before terra was iron finance so in june 2021 titan the token that backed stable coin iron crashed 100% in value and made the stable coin move off its peg it came more in limelight because famous billionaire mark cuban had invested in it as well okay so now coming back to the topic at hand Okay so this point I have already explained you since there is limited use case for luna token aside from backing UST if the dpeg pressure is high enough luna price would be pushed to zero as there is no uncorrelated demand there is no other demand that is coming up from any other place for luna especially in bearish markets now the second point that I agree with her is that for the stable coins most of the time the focus is on getting adoption for the stable coin itself like getting it into more amms which stands for automated market makers used as defi collateral depo- deploy it on multiple chains however the focus really is not getting the adoption of stable coin the stable coin is a utility product there's no real network effect for itself that guarantees sticky demand no matter how big a market cap or user base a stable coin has if it dpex came over and that's and that's really true now it's the network effect for the reserve asset of the stable coin that ultimately matters as that creates uncorrelated demand for res- reserve asset which protects its values and in turn safety of the peg so the asset that is backing the stable coin needs to have multiple uncorrelated demand and that should really be the focus of people involved in building the algorithmic stable coins and i agree to her on this one very well so i think yes these are the two most important point that needs to be taken care of else the algorithmic stable coins always face a danger of getting into that spiral that we already talked about and this has happened to prior algorithmic stable coin as well yeah so that's all that i wanted to discuss in this video folks with you all the risks of getting involved into stable coins you have to understand difference between different stable coins if you want more stability and you want to take less risk then would be great to go with other centralized and regulated stable coins such as USDC finance ust which are backed by real dollars i wanted to emphasize this again and again because many people have been treating ust as something of a savings account they have added a huge amount of savings money which they thought was safe but you have to understand the risks underlying this kind of stable coins as well personally i have also lost a lot of money in crypto trading assets investing and i am also learning it i'm not an expert by any means but my only suggestion is to just stay long enough like just stay in the game and understand it and hopefully you would be able to pick good assets understand the risks and if you want to see more of this kind of videos where we take general trends that's happening in the market not to create the hype but to in general talk about the risk involved how this mechanism works some crypto economics then please be sure to leave a comment so that i can know and i can make more of these videos and that is it folks i'll catch you in the next video bye bye